Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video and in this video we're going to be trying to do some water damage repair as well as some board level repair. We're going to be taking a look at a 64GB iPhone 4S on iOS 7.0.3, another iPhone 4S logic board running some version of iOS 8 that doesn't detect a battery, as well as trying to solder on a battery connector onto another iPhone 4S on iOS 7. And lastly, an iPhone 5 16GB white and silver which is severely water damaged and that's what we're going to be starting off with today in this video. As you can see the back of the phone is in really good condition. The only fault with this device is it's completely dead and shows no sign of life. You may remember this iPhone from the parts collection video which I did a few weeks ago. I got a massive amount of parts and loads of iPhones for only $60. Taking a closer look at the iPhone, it has lots of snapped off and rusty screws. So to start off with, I wasn't able to remove the logic board to try and clean it. Now to try and clean the logic board, I'm using something called isopropyl alcohol, or I believe that's how you pronounce it. And basically, it's this stuff that smells like hand sanitizer. And all I went ahead and done was spray this all over the board and use a toothbrush to go ahead and sort of brush away any corrosion or rust on the device. Now I started the, off with this with the shields on, but then decided that the, my best bet of getting the water damaged uh, iPhone up and running is to go ahead and remove this big shield which is covering up the CPU itself on the device um, to try and attempt to clean more of the water damaged components. To do that, I used a hot air station and uh, I can't even remember what temperature I used but obviously it wasn't enough as I wasn't able to remove the shields easily. Giving it a little bit more heat, I was able to rip off the shields, but because I wasn't able to remove that last screw, I just had to rip it off. Taking the shield off, you can see the water damage on the CPU itself. You can see the outline of where the water or liquid had been. After giving the newly revealed CPU a clean with a toothbrush, we can go ahead and soak this iPhone in isopropyl alcohol and let it sit for a good 24 hours for the um, isopropyl alcohol to dry. Then I can go ahead and test out the device, going ahead and hooking up a battery and LCD to the phone. We can go ahead and plug it into the charger and see what happens. Given the fact that this iPhone had been severely water damaged to a point where there was significant rust and even uh, snapped off screws, I didn't have high hopes for this to turn on, but sure enough, it actually booted up, but the display didn't light up. The phone was locked with a passcode, so I went ahead and wiped it and updated it from iOS 10.1.1 to iOS 10.3.3, and sure enough, I was able to activate the iPhone through iTunes and QuickTime Player. Then to use QuickTime Player to show the iPhone itself, you just need to go ahead and click on New Movie Recording and select the iPhone from the list of inputs. And you can see here that the phone is functional, although the LCD connector seems to have a missing pin um, and the LCD doesn't show any signs of lighting up or any backlight or anything like that. But the digitizer does work, meaning I can navigate around the iPhone if I plug it in, like I said, to QuickTime Player. And then I can go ahead and go into the About section. You can see there is a 16 gig on iOS 10.3.3. The phone had no iCloud lock or anything like that, so wiping it didn't lock the device. And you can see here I was successfully able to restore and update the device as well as activate it. Everything seems to be working, including Wi-Fi. The only problems I did run into was the cameras don't work, but overall not bad given this phone was completely dead. Next up, we have a 64GB iPhone 4S on iOS 7.0.3 with no iCloud activation lock. The phone does power on if you connect it up to an iPad charger, but does not connect a battery. Taking a closer look at the logic board, you can see evidence of water damage toward the bottom of the iPhone logic board. Um, so the first point of call was to remove the shields. Now on the iPhone 4 and 4S, they're very easy to remove. They just unclip. And taking those off, you can see even more uh, evidence of water damage. So my first point of call for repair is just to try this isopropyl alcohol and basically doing the same thing as I did with the iPhone 5, going ahead and using a toothbrush to clean it up. Now the reason that the battery is not being detected is the resistors and capacitors right next to the battery connector are completely rusted. So I thought I'd try this and see if this would revive those resistors and capacitors uh, right in front of that battery connector. And if successful, be able to revive the battery functionality of the iPhone. But unfortunately, the repairs did not go successfully and the phone still isn't detecting a battery. I also went ahead and tried this on another iPhone 4S which also didn't detect a battery. Uh, I have a lot of these boards that don't detect batteries. Like I said, this one does power on as well and is running some version of iOS, but is passcode locked. I didn't have any uh, luck with that one either, but I thought it was worth a shot given the fact that I was trying to revive some iPhone logic boards. Connecting them up, you can see that it still boot loops even with a battery connected unless you connect it to an iPad charger. 
Lastly, we're going to be taking a look at this iPhone 4S, which is a 4S 16 gig on iOS 7.1.1. It has an iCloud in settings, but no passcode on the device. It is missing the battery connector, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to try my first ever board level repair on an iPhone. Um, so I went ahead and purchased some Flux as well as a new battery connector. Um, I already had a cheapo hot air station and soldering iron that I was going to be using for this repair. The repair itself was not successful um, as the battery connector ended up not being uh, able to connect to the battery. I must have melted it or something like that. But either way, I thought I'd include this in the video just to show you guys my first attempt and um, just to show you guys that not everything I do is successful while most of the repairs and things I do turn out all right and usually everything uh, is at least working a little bit. This was unsuccessful. Uh, I did actually manage to get it to show the battery flat symbol if I was holding down uh, the connector. As I wasn't able to get the two solder joints um, on the left and far right of the battery connector actually soldered down correctly. And I believe this is because um, they're the pale rails, the negative and the positive, um, so they take a little bit more heat to solder in. Now if I was to do this again, I'd probably go ahead and connect up the battery first or get a dead battery and just be able to screw it down back into the logic board. That would align the connector uh, in the right position, making it a lot easier to solder in so I wouldn't actually have to hold the connector in place. Now I did go ahead and check the continuity of the actual pads of where the battery connector is soldered to to make sure that there wasn't any damage to the pads themselves. It was working, uh, but obviously I didn't do a good enough job at soldering it in. I can solder bigger things like wires and things like that, but when it comes to micro soldering, um, it is very difficult without a microscope. Um, so obviously this was just a bit of a hit and miss. And as I did damage the battery connector, um, the battery won't clip in. It will sit in there, but it immediately becomes unplugged. So there's no point me trying to fix up these solder joints at the meantime. I will have to get another battery connector and uh, try to solder it in. If I am successful, I will keep you guys updated. I might leave a comment down below if I ever get that fixed. Either way, this was a good first attempt at soldering in a battery connector on a 4S. Although unsuccessful, it is something I can improve on in the future. So while I did get the iPhone 5 to power on, it isn't fully functional and the display does not work. As for the water damaged iPhone 4S's, they were unsuccessful and still don't detect a battery. So it's obviously those resistors and capacitors actually just need to be replaced. And the 4S that had the missing battery connector needs further repair to become fully functional again. It appears that water damaged iPhones seem to be a bit of a hit and miss when it comes to trying to repair them, so I would definitely be avoiding them if you are looking for iPhones uh, to fix up. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the iPhone playlist more videos like this one. Also make sure you're following my social media, link will be in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.